my name is Matthew Pfeiffer with MattPfeifferCoach.com. Welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel, I create videos and content about toxic, narcissistically abusive relationships. And if you have a question that you'd like for me to answer, make sure you send it to JustAskMatt at MattPfeifferCoach.com. Again, that is JustAskMatt at MattPfeifferCoach.com. Just make sure you keep that email two to three paragraphs max, and you're also very direct and to the point of what your question actually is. And also make sure you hit the subscribe notification and also hit the bell notification so you're notified each and every time I upload a new video. With that being said, let's get into this email. This email comes from a person whose ex-husband is making their own accusations that this person slept with this person's sister. And it is causing a lot of chaos and causing a lot of drama. So let's get into this email. So this email reads, Hi Matt, thank you for all your posts. Uh, how would you deal with your ex-husband making accusations that he had a relationship with your sister for years during the marriage? Do I believe him? Yes. I have confronted her and she always says no, but she has never confronted him to say, why are you saying these things? I never knew that they were anything but friends before we started dating. Any questions I ask, he says to go ask her and talks about how much she betrayed him. So I'm going to circle back to that statement here in a second. I can't stand looking at her. We have children, so I can't really ever not see him. The thoughts make me crazy. She watched me suffer as I constantly strive to be in his world. I hate her and him. I feel like I was set up to fail and there was never no way I would have won this fight. I look back and envy the connection she was able to have with him. And while I was constantly fighting to be in her position, I just never knew at the time that she was my competition. He's moved on with someone else. And yet again, while I keep piecing things together in my mind, trying to desperately to let it go and move forward, I could go on with all the hints and all the stuff I brought up but I don't think it matters now. So what you're looking for is closure on this situation, right? And one of the few things that I, that I see here is uh, you say that I keep trying to piece things together in my mind, right? You're trying to put all the puzzle pieces back together, but I notice something that you said. I want to circle back to something that you said. You said any questions I ask, uh, that's not the part. Uh, you said that you keep asking her and she keeps denying it, and, and, but she won't confront him on the issue. You don't need her to. Here's how we know, right? Quite often when people, this is actually a more common issue than what people might give credit for. Uh, I talk to a lot of people who have gone through infidelity. They want certain answers. They want to know if this person has cheated with certain uh, people, maybe people in their family, maybe friends of theirs. And quite often, you already have the answers. You mentioned right here in the email, do I believe him? Yes. Quite often, we just don't want to accept the answers that we already have. You may not have all of the details, you may not know all of all of the times that it's happened. You may not know of the level of intimacy, if they really actually care for each other, those sorts of things. But those things you don't need to know. And the reality of it is, is between the two of them, you may not you may never get all of the answers that you're looking for. And the more answers that you get, it's likely going to inspire more questions. We need to begin to sit and we need to allow for the evidence that we already have. You mentioned some other hints and some other evidence, other things that you already have that, uh, and allow for that to be the closure because a part of you probably already knows you're looking for the external validation when this is something that you need to begin to, to validate internally. You already know, right? And it's unfortunate, right, that the conclusion that you've come up with is that, uh, that they did sleep together, but there's a handful of things that are happening here. So one of the questions that you ask is why is he doing this? Because exactly how you outline this, it bothers you. 
So we need to stop having this conversation with him. I would encourage for you to stop having the conversation with her as well. Begin to look at the evidence and the pieces that you already have for the closure that you need and begin to move forward based on the evidence that you already have. The more that he sees that this is bothering you, the more that he's going to continue to drive this narrative because he knows that it bothers you. The more that you ask, and he knows that this is an element of control that he has over you, and the more that you try to control this narrative, the more that the narrative begins to control you. And it sounds like you already have the answers. So it's important that you begin to move forward based on the answers that you already have and you can begin to uh, decide on what level of relationship that you want to have with your sister based on the answers that you already have as well rather than seeking the two of them for answers that neither one of them are willing to give you the entire truth because he's using this for what's called post-discard abuse and she's trying to cover up for something that it sounds like you already know and you already have other pieces of evidence too. This is very common and I'm sorry that this uh, has probably happened to you, but it sounds like you already know, but I would begin to look at closing this chapter on your own based on the things that you already know. But I can't stress enough that I would stop talking to him about these things. I would stop encouraging. I would stop asking, uh, especially him. The reason why is because he's using this as a manipulative power tactic as a form of post-discard abuse to try to rub it in your face and to try to make these wounds that you already have from the things that have happened even deeper and even worse. Thank you very much for writing in. If anyone else would like for me to answer a question that you might have, send it to justaskmatt at mattpfeiffercoaching.com. Again, that is justaskmatt at mattpfeiffercoaching.com. Make sure you keep that email two to three paragraphs max, and you're also very direct and to the point of what your question actually is. With that being said, thank you very much, and I will talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.